Hey everybody, Adam Savage and a clone trooper alongside Aaliyah or Ace. Aaliyah, where are you called Ace? Oh, well, I'm a cosplayer. I have been for nearly 15 years now. That nickname actually came from a Doctor Who companion that I cosplayed back in the early days, but actually started off life as an Imperial Stormtrooper, and I still am. You are an Imperial Stormtrooper cosplayer. I am an Imperial Stormtrooper. And you did the assembly of this clone trooper. Yeah, it's a bit of a dream come true, really. Because, am I right, this is the first time this costume has been rendered physically. Yeah, first ever live action costume ever on screen. I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around that because... So am I, and I'm looking at it. <laughs> I, were, I will tell you that I was at Industrial Light and Magic when my friend Mike Murnane was sculpting the maquette for this helmet for the movie. That is amazing. It's <laughs> hard to think how long ago that is now. Time really has flown. That's like 20, 23, 22 years ago. Oh my God. <laughs> and it's taken this long. So you got to bring to life this costume. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. So like the main reference image we had was just a digital model. So it's just finding ways to bring that in into life and actually have it so people can wear it because obviously a digital character can move any way you want, but these guys have got to fight. They've got to be able to fall over and do all sorts and well, try not to get too hurt. Okay, so when you say you get, you get a digital model from the CG clone troopers, what is how come you can't just take that model, cut it up and start printing parts from it? Oh, basically you have to size it pretty much to fit people because the digital models aren't intended for that and you've got to make sure everything can move and work as one piece because you can see all the separate pieces that come together right. to actually make it into it. So we've got things that are sprayed out of urethane, things that are vacuum cast, everything's made so it's really nice and lightweight so you don't have a lot of strain because again with the thing knowing with Stormtrooper armor, a lot of strain sits on your shoulders so you wear that all day, it really sucks. Really? So you've, you've got to make sure that you can move in it and actually do the job. I mean visibility is still not going to be a key thing but <laughs> try to make it a little bit better as well. It's why they're bad shots. Yeah, I mean, the clones are supposed to be better shots, but <laughs> you won't mention that. Um, as a Stormtrooper cosplayer, you are intimately familiar with the armor bites that happen from a missized set of armor. So Absolutely. you brought that knowledge to this. Uh, yeah, definitely. And uh, another little thing about this armor, which cosplayers are really going to like, if you are a clone trooper cosplayer, you don't have to worry about your seams anymore because this armor is so much easier to put on because this armor is actually clamshelled, which is, you know, attached on one side and you can pull it open and slide it on. Okay, so you take the CG model and you start to give it form to be able to turn into into an actual costume. Where do you begin with the parts to, to get them to fit on the on the actor? Uh, well, normally you get a body scan of a particular actor. Obviously, these are a kind of one-size-fits-all deal. So uh, we've got a body scan of someone that would be a good size and shape. So you kind of work around that. So it's, again, like I said, it's it's quite a standard thing. And then just figuring out how you can layer everything. Because you look at the clone troopers from episode two, they're all really skinny. So again, you've got <laughs> you to size it up. And again, the armor is quite thin compared to some of the digital models as well. So again, it's just a lot of jiggery pokery and a lot of test runs. You print stuff and just see how it all moves and before you actually try and get anything into the final materials. As a fellow obsessive who, who likes to take costumes like this and put them in your brain, is there an aspect of this build that surprised you, that you didn't know you would learn? Well, to be honest, there's a lot of it was quite familiar. So yeah. like mainly the assembly of the armor, even though it's out of different pieces, because normally with clones, you either get a uh, vacuum formed or fiberglass kits. Mm -hmm. Fiberglass kits, terrible to work with, don't get those. <laughs> 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 if you can get vacuum formed, get those. Uh, so yeah, it's quite, it's quite sort of basic if you really know what you, if you've done armor before, but the helmet was the most complex part because a lot of makers just do like a slush cast. Right. And this is all vacuum formed in multiple different sections. Oh, wow. So That's very much like the original helmets. Yeah, pretty much. So it's it's assembling it as well. So there's no really obvious seam lines. So again, you've got parts like the jaw here. So this jaw will be connected to this part here. Yeah. The top of the head, you've got the seam line here. But again, it's all hidden by certain details on the helmet. So it all looks like really just one nice smooth piece. So there's this moment then when you've finished your first assembly of all those parts and you look around and just put it on your head? I did try one. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone was looking, but now I've said that out loud. <laughs> um, so, and you've gotten to see these suits in action now. Uh, yeah, so um, this particular one was obviously used on Obi-Wan Kenobi for Order 66. Um, but the, we've also built the clone troopers that are going to be used on Andor. So that's also 
pretty cool. So those guys are just the white grunts. Obviously, this is the nice blue of the 501st Legion. I love all the weathering on this. Weathering is my favorite part of doing any suits. Um, so yeah, and we've also got this really nice little undersuit going on here with all the ribbing as well. I wanted to talk about this. The undersuit is really quite beautiful. I'm used to, you know, a standard Stormtrooper ribbed neck, yeah. but this this fabric is really, really lovely. Yeah, I guess, I think it's something you can see on the digital models as well, like in episode three. I think the clones are the only ones that really have a nice textured undersuit. So obviously these undersuits are all custom made here as well. Yeah. So it's a nice, nice pull on, I think it's all one piece suit and you've got some panels that are a little bit lightweight and breathable. So well, I know. see, yeah, I see spacer yeah. mesh in here. That's really nice yeah, you, for letting air come through. Yeah, because armor condensates like a, you're basically wearing a greenhouse. So at the end of the day, <laughs> you take off a bit of armor, you're dripping. So you and you've really, lost five pounds. Yeah, it's great exercise. So yeah, you really want a nice breathable undersuit on that as well. Any things you want to call out to future Clone Trooper cosplayers who want to reenact scenes from Obi-Wan Kenobi? Don't be so brave as to like do all the stunts and falling over. Okay. You, you will hurt yourself. <laughs> but because this, uh, this stuff, this urethane is really, really durable as well. So uh, I wouldn't recommend people do that with their own armor. Um, Fair enough. Yeah, but again, it's, you don't have to worry about the seams anymore, guys. I, it's great. <laughs> I just love that you are a... Stormtrooper cosplayer, that knowledge was invaluable in putting this together, I'm sure. Yeah, it was It was fantastic. I was sitting in the little back room by myself and I had, had all these pieces, like just lines of just doing like putting the forearms together and like doing all the legs. And it's even though I do it at home, it's just really weird doing it in a professional environment and knowing these are going to go on set and be seen <sighs> by everybody. <laughs> Can we talk about the, the, the leg, the leg hanging? Yeah, yeah. You've so, got two yeah, two straps down here, which again is quite different to when you're doing a normal cosplay. Like on Stormtroopers or clones, normally it's just yeah, one strap, it's either attached under the cod piece or you have a separate belt and it comes down will just attach to the front. I mean, it normally works, but again, when you're when you're filming like this, there, there's a lot more movement than just walking around a con. Fair enough. Uh, so sometimes you've just have a strap at the front, the, the leg tends to want to shift around. So again, having that extra strap at the back means that's not gonna, that's not gonna rotate and you're not gonna get extra pinchy knees, which always sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you've got this extra uh, little leg strap that goes around the actual back of the knee here, which is gonna hinder a little bit of movement, but I not too that. much. Yeah. And it's also on the inside of the elbow. Yeah, so this is out of a, a softer rubber. Uh, so you actually get a little bit more sort of bend in there, so it's it's not the same as the hard armor. Uh, so again, it's 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 quite. A, I like the little unique details on the clones. You don't get on the troopers. They just it just really it's just it's just nice. It's just really nice. The the look on your face is that of a proud parent, and this is yeah. a, a beautiful creation. Absolutely. I, I, this is I wouldn't say this is my son. <laughs> There's too, <laughs> too many of them, and my name's not Django Fett, but. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 quite a remarkable thing and an absolute honor to work on something like this. Ah, amazing.